Hallelujah. I want to share a powerful scripture with you this morning. And this is the foundation. This is something that me as John Ray live by on a daily basis. And it's not just the gospel. What I'm going to share with you is part of the gospel. We all know that Christ is the center of our lives. But I want to share something profound this morning with you and teach you on that helps me. And it's my motto that I live by and that I try to live by on a daily basis. And let's read that scripture verse. It's out of First Thessalonians 5 verse 11. And I'm going to read out of the Amplified Classic. And it says, Therefore encourage, admonish, exhort one another and edify, strengthen and build up one another just as you are doing. Now, I love this verse. This is something that's encrypted in my heart. This is the verse that I love the most out of the whole Bible. If, 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 she, if you should ask me, John, which verse do you really enjoy and love? I will tell you it's this verse. Because here God is speaking to the church and he says, you as the brethren, you as believers, what I need from you is to start building those up around you. And have you realized that it is so easy to break someone down? Have you seen it before? It's easy to walk up to someone and start criticizing them. It's easy to walk up to someone and say something negative. You do not be, uh, have to be this type of special person in order to break someone down. You can just be a regular person and you can just seek fault with everything. It's really not that hard. If you really want to hurt someone, it's really easy. Think about it. Is it difficult to hurt someone? No. But it really takes a gift from God in order to build someone up. And I'm not talking about only preachers from the platform building one another up. I'm talking about you as an individual that's going to your job tomorrow or to school tomorrow or to your friends or family tomorrow to go there and to build them up in the name of Jesus Christ. That really is a gift. Now please take note of this. It's way easier and faster to break this glass than to manufacture this glass. In a split second I can break this glass. I'm not going to because it's the churches. <laughs> In a split second, I can break this glass, and any person in this building can do it. But it really takes a gift, a talent, to make this beautiful glass. And here Jesus Christ has created every single individual in such a profound and unique and a beautiful way. And here we are as people, and we feel good, or we feel cool, when you walk up towards someone and you break that person down. You are like a bully. You think it's a gift. You think you are so cool. You think you're awesome. No. Any person can do it. So this morning I want to give you this word and take it with you to build up one another. Jandre, what am I supposed to take with me today to my week? Is to have that spirit upon you that will build people up that won't break them down. It's to be a person that encourage and exhort those around you. Being a person that doesn't give up on others. But just to be that individual that, that says, you know what? God created this person in his own image. For the Lord has a wonderful plan for this person. Lord, Please give me your eyes. I want to see what you see in this person. I want to help to bring out the uniqueness, the beautiful, uh, profound plan that you have placed within this person's life. And then the Lord will trust you as you have relationship with him and he will open that person's life to showing the beautiful and the uniqueness that he has placed within this person. Sometimes we ask certain things of God and we do not receive an answer. Can I say something? I'm going to say something radical. 
sometimes God won't trust everyone, every single Christian with certain revelations. Let me give you this illustration. If you are sitting here and you say, John Ray, I would love to heal the sick, then I want to ask, when last did you pray for a sick person? God will not bless you with that gift of healing when he sees that you are going to be a person that does not use this gift. If you are going to be a person that has this heart's intention to edify those around you and to strengthen and to build up, then you ask God, Lord, teach me on how to build your kingdom. Because Christianity is all about building the kingdom of God. Expanding the kingdom of God. But can I give you the climax? It's easy to love someone and to build someone up that loves you back. Think about it. It's easy to compliment those that you know that compliments you back. It's easy to love those that you know that loves you back. Let us read out of Matthew 5, verse 43 to 45. I'm going to read for us out of the New King James Version. And Jesus said this. I said, he said, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. I want to ask you, do you think everybody loves you? But did you do good to that person this week that passed who hated you? <laughs> I cannot remember the pastor's name, but I remember the story very well. Here the verse, it says, bless those who curse you. And there was this prosperity preacher and he was, he was an extremely wealthy preacher. And then a different preacher went and criticized this guy on the TV on an interview or something saying that, yes, this guy is busy with a cult and he's busy preaching nonsense to the people and he's just preaching money and he's just preaching prosperity and healing and he's just preaching all this stuff. And that exact same pastor that was sitting there criticized got an EFT with a ridiculous amount of money that was blessed into his account. And he did some research. They want to know, where did this money come from? And then he saw that this money came from the guy who he criticized. And he came in contact with this person. He said, why are you blessing me? Are you trying to bribe me or something? He says, no, I'm just doing the word. The word says that bless those who curse you. And I just wanted to bless you because you're cursing me. <laughs> bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use and persecute you. That you may be sons of your father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and the good and sends rain upon the just and on the unjust. I think we can all learn something here today that we as the church has a responsibility to go into the world should you face a Philistine or should you face a Christian, a lukewarm Christian, a Hindu, a Muslim, an atheist, a Satanist, a Luciferian. You can give me the whole list. I want to encourage you today to be the person that builds up. But now you will ask, John Ray, but how is it possible to build someone up that does not believe in Christ. Well, he's supposed to see and to taste that the Lord is good. And you are supposed to be that fruit which he tastes from. This is the key. A theory will not save that person. You have to work with the individual's heart. It's like evangelizing to someone. If you go towards someone and you want to build them up, it, it's not a thing of theory. It's a practical experience. It's something that must manifest towards that person. He must see there's something different within this person. 
it must actually make him stumble. He must think, but I thought this person hated me. I thought he wanted to do nothing with me. Now he's complimenting me. What's going on in his life? And you practice this consistency. The next day, you are the first person to, to at your workplace to reach out and to greet him by the hand. And you say, hey, good morning, how are you? And you do this on a, on, on, on a consistent basis. He's going to see there's something different about this person. What's going on in this person's life? Christ must manifest through you. And if we read the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, long-suffering, self-control. Those are the fruits that is supposed to be visible to everyone around you, not only to the brethren. Peace must manifest even to those who hurt you. Forgiveness, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Believe me if I tell you on this beautiful sunny day that it's not easy being kind to a person whom you know won't appreciate your kindness. Many times I've blessed someone and that gift I wanted to bless them with was rejected. And then I said, Lord, it's fine. Let me, let me share this testimony. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This one night, me and my wife was driving and we ate something somewhere. And on our way back home, I saw in the Spirit of like a light tunnel from, from the heavens down. And I knew the Lord said that I should go there. There's a person there that I must bless. And he gave me the exact amount that I must bless the person with. And it was a homeless person lying there under that tree. And I went to him, and you can ask my wife. I climbed out of the car, and he was busy sleeping. And I thought, should I just put the note on his shoulder or something? What should I do? But I, I'm, maybe someone would, would, would steal it. And I just say, sorry, sir. I and then he woke up and he looked at me. He said, what do you want? I said, no, I just wanted to bless you with this. And this person said to me, I don't want your money. And I'm like, but Lord, you sent me here. What happened? The very next day, the very next day, a different guy came to me and said to me, he needs help financially. And I still had that money with me. And I blessed him with that money. And the person was so thankful. And I said to the Lord, yeah, I can see that once a person rejects your gift, you just bless someone else with it. Do you know what happened? And this is the bonus part. Literally two hours after that, someone phoned me and said, John Ray, I have this nice office chair that I want to bless you with. If you want it, come and pick it up. If you don't want it, you can bless someone else with it. Now take note, two weeks before that, I was walking in macro, and I was walking around there, and I was looking for an office chair for my house. And I said to myself, but this chair is quite expensive. Let's talk amounts. This chair was 1,900 rand on special, and I... I looked at this chair this way, and I said, mm, I'm very expensive, you know. <laughs> and that day when I blessed that other person, this guy phoned me and said, John Ray, he has this chair, he just wants to bless me with it. And I went to his house, and I picked up that exact same chair that I saw in Macra, and this person didn't know about it. <laughs> if you are going to be a person that will fine-tune, if you are going to be a person that's going to be tuned in to being good to those around you and to sow and to bless and to encourage and to bless again and to encourage again and to forgive again and to just keep on keeping on building one another up and those around you, even when they fall, still building them up. Even when they criticize you, still building them up. You will see what God will do for you in your life. I'm going to end with this illustration. Many will say, the glasses are full. And we all know the story that some people 
sees the glass half full, others say it's half empty. So you get the pessimists and you get the optimists, right? Which one are you this morning? You will say, John, I'm the optimist, but now I want to challenge you. Will you still be an optimist? Get the revelation this morning. Will you still be the optimist? Will you still say, you know what, John Dre, I will still be an optimist, but it, because at least there's something still left in that glass. <laughs> Many times we measure, we as individuals do this, we measure saying, I wonder if I should do this or not. And when the odds don't look nice to you or it doesn't complement the way you think or you want to do things, then most likely you never take part. But if you can only start seeing the little bit of good, the little bit of good news and be thankful for it and to build upon that, be the optimist. If you go to that person at your job and you know this person is really He's, he's like a 90-10, a you know, 90% bad, 10% good. And if you know that, don't give up on that person. Still be optimistic towards that person. Still try and build up that person. Don't just see, okay, this person's glass is half, half full, half empty. Mm, I wonder what I should do. No, even if that person doesn't have anything to give you or to build you up with, you still be the person that builds him up. For the sake and the name of Jesus Christ. To always point him towards Christ. In Afrikaans they say this thing. They, they used to say to me at the mines. They say. John, you loop altijd met die Bible onder die arm. You weet? They, you, you always walk with your Bible underneath your arm. They used to say that to me at the mine. But I literally carried the Bible underneath my arm. Because I had a Bible at my workplace. And during lunch times I used to read the word of God. And they criticized me on this. And like the first few weeks, I, I was actually discouraged. But after that, I saw the beauty in it. And then I said, praise the Lord, at least I have the word of God with me. I'm not trying to show off, I'm trying to learn from the word. Many times people will look at you as an individual and say, Oh, you think you're so holy. My friend, I am holy through what Jesus did on the cross. I'm now classified as holy and beloved based upon the word of God. If someone tries to break you down, don't fight fire with fire. Throw some water on that fire. If someone comes to you and wants to break you down, you just build them up. If someone wants to come and build you up, you also build them up. If someone comes to you depressed, you build them up. If someone comes to you happy, you build them up. Encourage those around to encourage your children, encourage your husband, encourage your wife, encourage your mother, your father, encourage your, your boss, those that work around you. Sometimes all what people need is just a bit of motivation. Whom of you played sports in school? You enjoyed sport. You remember when you were busy, you know, um, let's say you were you were at this stadium and there was a bunch of schools and they were competing against one another. And now you knew, okay, so Vili was, was part of your school. And so the moment Vili starts running and he's busy and the whole school goes, go Vili, go Vili, go Vili. Then all of a sudden, have you felt that feeling before? It's like you got this extra power, this extra motivation that you just kept on running and you gave your very best. That is what we as Christians is supposed to do towards one another. We're supposed to say to that person that's going through difficult times, Go Eta, go Eta, go Eta, go Eta, go Herman, go Herman, go Herman. Not to say, ah, oh, he's falling behind, he's lost, ah. Oh. Be a person of hope. Word and spirit, hope and healing, right? Come on, let's live out this mandate that's upon Pastor Henry's life. Let's, let's help him with this hope and healing. Be the person that builds up. Come on, turn to your neighbor and compliment him quickly. Look at something, that uh, see something good that you can find. And don't just compliment your husband or your wife. Turn around a bit or 
just say, yeah, you look so beautiful today. Love the hat or love the shoes. Amen. Let's be a group of Christians that's optimists, that sees the good in life, the value, because you only live once, right? Might as well do it fully. Amen. Go and give your very best this week. Be the positive person. Be the person that brings change and order and structure within a broken world. In a place of darkness, go, you go and be the light. And the Holy Spirit will teach you. Amen. Amen and amen. Let us pray together. Father, thank you so much for this beautiful day, Lord. Lord, thank you that you are optimist. <laughs> Lord, thank you that you are God that doesn't break down, but you rather build up. You are God where people give up, you never give up. Where people go and sit and cry in a corner, you always remain standing. Through difficult times, Lord, you never faint. For you are so loyal and so faithful. And you are so strong, Lord. And we say thank you. Teach us on how to be the, the type of church, the type of Christian that will build up those around us and not break those around us. Lord, teach us, Holy Spirit, on how to see the beautiful within every single person. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I also pray, Lord, for every single person that's going to bring your tithe and your offering now. Ask that you would bless that offering, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for watching with us online. I want to remind